Good morning, everyone. Today we will go to read Proverbs chapter seven. I just received this news last night, so the some changes in the morning devotion arrangement in the mother church. We were reading the book of Revelation, but、uh, it's decided that we first read. Book of Proverbs, and then we'll see if we continue with the Book of Revelation because、uh, we've just read from you just read、uh, the Book of Isaiah, and then the Book of、uh, Revelation. The content is very rich, so we want to take a break for everyone to digest the content more. And、uh, it's quite interesting. Originally, we were supposed to read the Book of Revelation. Chapter seven, and it should be about a seven sealed, and there should be a pause between the opening of the sixth and the seventh seal. And here we suddenly inserted Proverbs chapter six and chapter eight, and let's see what God wants to tell us now.、I、believe that God, that God's will is is here. And、uh, today we read the book of Proverbs, chapter seven, verse one to five, and the first six to twenty, twenty-one to twenty-three, and then twenty-four to twenty-seven. So this chapter is about wisdom, and、uh, the tension between wisdom and sin, and where does this battle happen in the heart of man? You can imagine like this. The, this proverb gives us a picture, and have you ever played、um, the pulling the rope game? And、uh, two sides pulling on the rope, and、uh, sin and wisdom is each on different sides, and、uh, we are like the rope being pulled to. Each side, and、uh, how can we make decision when we're being pulled by sin and also by wisdom? So this chapter will give us some reminder. Let's first read the first section, first one to five. My son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live, and my law is the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. Stay to wisdom. You are my sister and call understanding your nearest kin. That they may keep you from the moral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words. So in the beginning, said、uh, my son. So the proverb was written by a father to his son, and this father is not an ordinary man, and、uh, he was a very wise king in Israel, according to tradition. We believe that、uh, the Book of Proverbs. Was written by King Solomon, and so this father is not was not an ordinary father. He was a king. He was the wisest man ever. He belonged to God. He was loved by God. He was Jedidiah, and that was his name given by God. And he was full of wisdom, loved by God, full of authority, and.、Uh, Thoughtfully, he passed on his most precious wisdom to his children. So, in the beginning, he said, "My son, my son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live in in Chinese. The word 'keep' and 'treasure' are the same word.、Uh, in English, 'keep.'" Is is、uh, what to do and treasure describes our attitude. We should treasure God's commands. So, in terms of our attitude, we need to treasure God's commands. The words of the Father were actually from God, just like、uh, the law. You know, actually the. Is equivalent for the custom of the Jews. The father should pass the word of God to the children from generation to generation. So this is a great reminder for us today. Our children receive the godly message.
from whom usually we rely on the mothers, but actually the Bible tells us that the father should be the one who pass on the tradition of faith. So in Israel, who learn prayer, it should be led by the father, and when they go to the temple or to the sanctuary, they are led by the father. The father is the head of the family, so the source of、uh, God. A godly faith is from the father. The father is the source, the origin, and that's in Israel's background and culture. And so here it says, "My son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you." The word of the father, which also is the word of God. So treasure this. Listen to the teachings of Torah. Take it. Value it, and the word "keep my commands and live" that describes our action when we treasure God's commands in our attitude. We should keep the commands by our action. So don't just listen and leave it in our head, in our mind. Someone said,、uh, "The distance between a mind and a heart may be the furthest, the furthest distance in the whole world." Torah is the tree of life to the Israelites. So, if they keep Torah, they keep the tree of life. Then they keep the eternal life, and that's the wisdom of the Father. The Father really wants to pass on this message to his son, and so very thoughtfully, very patiently. He encouraged his son to keep the word of God and to live it out. To keep the word of God, just like keeping the apple of his eye. The apple of the eye means something you like the most. We must treasure the word of God above all things. The word of God should be like our first love. You know what is it special? That、uh, you always want to see the other person when you first dated, you could talk on the phone for many hours, and there were endless topics. But then after getting married, it seems that you have nothing more to talk about because you share everything already. So we should treat the Bible as our first love. You will always spend time with it. There's endless conversation, endless time you want to spend with the Bible, and if you if you treat the Bible like this, it will keep your life. And as you bind the Word of God on your fingers and write them on the tablet of your heart, then it can make us live the eternal life is within us. And you should say to wisdom, "You are my sister, and call understanding your nearest kin." And、uh, Wisdom and understanding here refer to the understanding of God's will and God's word. And understanding depends on intimacy with God. If you say, "Oh, I know someone well," how come you can know him well? Because you spend a lot of time with him. If you don't see him like often at all, maybe. You just see him once every ten years, then you don't really know him. I can say I really know my sim or my wife because I know him since、uh, secondary form two, and we have always been serving the same department. And actually, we see each other twenty four seven, and we. Go to work and go home together for so many years. So I know I know my wife so well because of my interaction with her.、I、have a very intimate relationship with her. So say to wisdom, you're my sister, and call understanding your nearest kin. That's a literary expression. Just.、Uh, Describing our relationship with God, because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, and so if we know God, we have wisdom. When we have a relationship with God, then we are wise. We are a person of understanding. Because if we have a relationship with God, we have eternal life. If we have a closer relationship, 
then we can do anything, because with God there's nothing impossible, and that's wisdom and understanding. And you need to treat them as your sisters, the nearest kin, your family, your relatives. The nearest kin is just like Boaz and Ruth, and、uh, Boaz covered Ruth by with his robe, and so Ruth's life was never the same again. At first, she was a foreigner, but because of Moab, she could enter into the family of Israel, and she became an ancestor of Jesus. So her identity was greatly changed. So as we treat wisdom and understanding like our family, that they don't depart, don't let it depart from us. That will receive the tree of life. This wisdom and understanding, this relationship with God, will keep you from the immoral woman. And that's why, in the beginning, the book of Proverbs says this will keep you alive because there are idolatrous women, immoral women outside. If you are not close to God, then you cannot resist the immoral woman. Just as I mentioned earlier in the beginning. It's like、uh, pulling a rope. Sin and wisdom are on opposite side. Without God, we won't be able to win. And this was what this king commanded, instructed his son. Only if he will hold on tightly to God's word, to Torah, to the tree of life, then it can keep you from the immoral woman, from the sed. Actress who flatters with her words, and a seductress also can be translated for a woman representing temptation that lead us away from God. There are many temptations outside trying to tempt us away from God. The world will use all kinds of way to tempt us away from God. So the only way to keep our lives is to treasure God's word, to keep His word. To keep his commands, and then we can live. Otherwise, the following picture will happen. Let's read verse six to twenty. This is an example in reality. Proverbs first shows us、um, the truth, and then give us a case study. So let's look at this case study. Verse six. For at the window of my house, I looked through my letters and saw some saw among the simple. I perceived among the youths a young man devoid of understanding, passing along the street near her corner, and he took the path to her house in the dry light in the evening, in the black and dark night. And the woman met him with the attire of a harlot and a crafty heart. She was loud and rebellious. Her feet would not stay at home. At times she was outside. At times in the open square, looking at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him with an impudent face. She said to him, "I have peace offerings with me today. I have paid my vows. So I came out to meet you diligently to seek your face, and I have found you. I spread my bed." With tapestry, colored coverings of Egyptian linen, I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love t- until morning. Let us delight ourselves with love. For my husband is not at home; he has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him, and will come home on the appointed day. So. The wise man, he said, for at the window of my house I looked through my lattice, which actually means from his eyes, he could see some among the youths, a young man with no understanding, maybe someone who was curious, and just like the Western proverb says, curiosity kills a cat. So we need to be careful if we are curious. It, but then, not wise, it can actually harm us. Just like earlier, you know, there were TV programs about spiritists in the King of Spiritists in 
It makes people curious. Even Christians might be curious to watch that. Is it really true that spiritists can、uh, help people get into the spiritual world? And the reason they watch may be just simply curiosity, but that's very harmful. So, from the the maybe even his own personal experience, this wise man, this author, he said, "Young man, maybe out of curiosity, he would draw closer to." Where the harlot, the immoral woman, lived, and、uh, passing along the street near her corner, he took the path to her house in the tri night in the evening, in the black and dark night. It, this time is usually the time people will sin in the dark when no one notices, or thinking that others will see this. So this young man, he went on to the house. Of the harlot, and there a woman met him with the attire of a harlot, a prostitute, and she was loud and rebellious. You know, sin is like this too. It's alluring. It makes you curious. It looks very nice on the outside. It makes you curious and wants to. Try it out. So this young man went to the house of the harlot, and she was out of rebellious. Her feet would not stay at home. At times she was outside. At times in the open square, looking at every corner, and that's the characteristics of sin. You cannot suppress it. So sin is like devil. It's like a beast. And it comes after you. And the Bible says, if you don't do well, sin will be like waiting for you, like a lion waiting for its prey, wait ready to attack the prey. And this harlot caught this young man and kissed him. With an impudent face, she said to him, "I have peace offerings with me. Today I pay my vows, so I came out to meet you, diligently to seek your face, and I found you. I have spread my bed with tapestry, color coverings of Egyptian linen, and I have perf- perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until morning. Let us delight ourselves with love." For my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home on the appointed day. So we may not like to hear the word of God a little bit, but the enticing word of sin is attractive. And. This immoral woman spoke with impud with an impudent face. She said, "I peace offerings with me today. I pay my vows. So I came out to you diligently to seek your face, and I found you by coincidence. So it's like I have pay my vows to you. I've offered a peace offering. So she was like saying, 'You see, it's God bringing us together.'" You know, I did not plan to see you. It's, it's a coincidence, an appointment by God. And if you are, were a man, you hear this word, and you find that、uh, in this woman's heart, you are like a king. And then, well, you be enticed too. You know, the greatest problem of man is that we like to hear words of praise and affirmation. You know, men have a very weak. Sense of honor. As wife, you need to protect his sense of honor and dignity. You need to praise him, then he will never go away from you. But if you make him feel bad about himself and you shame him, and some other woman talk nicely to him, then he will have an affair. We have、uh, done counseling for many. 
others.、Uh, the wife would say, "I don't know why the man, my husband, would like this mistress. I'm more beautiful. I、um, am better at career, but then it's because the mistress knows how to praise the father and makes him feel good about himself." You know, when、uh, Eve was created from Adam, the rib bone was taken from、uh, Adam because actually、um, the man needs to be protected in terms of the sense of、uh, dignity and honor, and this. Woman, he said, "I've just offered a peace offerings. You know, for the meat, it needs to be eaten within two days. So, how can someone finish the peace offerings, the meat within two days?" So she said, "Okay, so you should come to me. So good is just fresh, and come and enjoy it with me. I cannot finish it myself, and you know, I really value you. I've spread my bed with tapestry colored coverings of Egyptian linen." Those are very expensive cloths, and I perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloe vera cinnamon. You know the best things she offered to the man, and so let us enjoy and indulge in our lust until morning. You know that's the temptation from the world. From our lust, and the presentation looks very comfortable and and happy. But the godly way is not easy. The worldly way, you can enjoy it, and it's so、like、very comfortable. Like on Sunday when you wake up, oh, it's a holiday. Why shouldn't I sleep till twelve o'clock? Why should I wake up early to attend the worship service? You may struggle. Oh, shouldn't I just lay on my bed? Why should I change and do so much thing and then hurry my children to go? Why it shouldn't be a family day or sleeping day? That we have ten thousand excuses or reasons, but then that's the difference. The the immoral woman or the harlot said, "So let us delight ourselves with love, for my husband is not at home. You know this is sin. She was not faithful to her husband, and not faithful to God." And sin is like that too. Not faithful to God, and she said, "Oh, my husband has gone on a long journey. Has taken a bag of money with him. He will come home on the appointed day, which means、uh, maybe the middle of the month." And when she offered peace offerings, there should be the new moon time, which is the beginning of the month. So I have two weeks, so I can have I can sin and no problem. And the sin enticed the young man. Okay, let's read verse twenty-one. With her enticing speech, she caused him to yield. With her flattery lips, she seduced him. Immediately, he went after her, as an ox goes to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of his of the stocks. Till an arrow struck his liver, as a bird hastened to the snare. He did not know it would cost his life. So, with her enticing speech, she caused him to yield. You know, sin is like that. Sin tries to entice us, and then it'll be hard for us to escape. The young man was like having no defense anymore. He was pushed to go on with sin. He couldn't resist it. It was like he was out of control, but just as an ox goes to the slaughter, didn't know what would happen. But actually, it was a path to death, or like a fool to the correction of the stocks, which means he will fall into a trap that he set up for himself. Till an arrow struck his liver. Because the Israelites used to shoot at a bird, and、uh, if a bird got shot at its liver, it would die for sure. So that's the consequence of sin. And also, like a bird hastens to the snare, he did not know it would cost his life. That was also 
a way to catch or hunt some birds in the Asian Near Eastern culture. They will set up a big net and with water, water, and from a far distance, they. The, the birds may not see the net. They just thought, "Oh, there's water. They want to drink." And as the birds fly down quickly to drink from the water, they will use the net to ensnare them. So from a far distance, because the water will reflect the light, so the birds cannot see clearly, and it will come down very quickly. So they got trapped at the net. But if they could see the net, and if they would fly down slowly, they would see the net, and then they would not fall into the trap. And that's. You know the same for us. If we rush things, we may make mistakes or fall into sin more easily. And as long as we can stand back, we may avoid the trouble of sin. And usually, that's the that's the stupidity of the young people. They do not have enough wisdom. They were. Or impulses. So the proverbs tells us we need to be careful and don't be impulses because of sin. Don't listen to the enticing word of the world. Otherwise, we fall into a, the trap ourselves and not know that it will cost our lives. So the last section, verse twenty-four to the end. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children. Pay attention to the words of my mouth. Do not let your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths, for she has cast down many wounded, and all who were slain by her were strong men. Her house is the way to hell, descending to the chamber. Embers of death. So it says, "Listen to me, my children, and you will have wisdom. Don't follow sin. Don't be enticed by the harlot. Don't go onto the path of indulgement, because on the surface they look so attractive, but in the end they will bring you to death, just like this harlot." And her way will lead you to hell. It says her house is the way to hell, descending to the chambers of death. So if you live with her, you will go down to hell, because she is the way to hell. So take her path, you go to hell. And what is most important is verse twenty-six is a great reminder for us, for she has cut down many wounded. Oh. Who were slain by her were strong men. In the Chinese translation, may not be so clear, but the English translation is better. So she has hurt many people and make them wounded, and all who were slain by her were strong men. What does it mean? If you think that you are strong, you can resist its temptation, then you must be careful. If you rely on yourself, you will surely fail. Because all the strong men in front of her will be killed by her, no one will be exempted. But the humble ones, the ones who know he need to hold on to God, they can pass through the temptation. It's not by all strength or flesh. It's like I have a good relationship with God. And I have strong faith. I'm just out of curiosity. Once I want to look at、uh, those TV programs about the spirits, it's okay. Or I have a strong relationship, a good relationship with my wife, it's okay. I know my limitations, and then slowly you may go further away. And that's the strong men. They think they can resist sin and temptation, but they will fall. But we know that we are weak. If we know that we cannot depart from God's word, we cannot leave God's help. The only thing who helps 
us to overcome sin is the word of God. If we fix our eyes on the word of God, we will live. And that's why the Lord asks us to run away from the lust of the youth, the temptation of the youth. Don't think that oh, I'm fine, I'm strong, I can resist it. But no, the way of victory that God gives us when we face. Temptation is not to face it, but to run away from it. We should look to God, look away from the temptation. So, and then treat、uh, wisdom as our closest relative, as our sister. So we don't go closer to the harlot. We don't go to her house. We don't take her path because that would bring us to. Hell. So we need to take the path of life, the tree of life. So keep the word of God and and treasure God's word and walk His way. Then we'll be safe. And that's the reminder of Proverbs for us today. May we all have this wisdom and and understanding. Amen. So let's come before the Lord and give thanks to Him and ask the Lord to help us to treasure His word. Lord, help us to treasure Your word from our hearts, not just our actions, but we can treasure Your word from our hearts. Lord, thank you for speaking to us every day through Your word. It's Your precious word. Guide us so that we won't go to hell, because Your words keep us. Lord, we value Your word. Oh, my heart, treasure God's word. Be humble. Be humble. Keep the word of God, the Torah of God. Keep God's command as the apple of my eye. So, Lord, help us that we can keep your law, treasure it, write them on the tablet of our hearts. And、uh, today, the Proverbs chapter seven reminds us that we need to be careful not to be curious and fall into temptation. And we think that、oh, we can overcome sin, and we get close to the temptations. And、uh, just as Pastor mentioned, maybe you want to watch something about the spiritual world, the dark world, and、uh, we may be ignorant, we may be impulsive, and we may be curious, and there may be some addiction online. Let's come before the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to show us, and even confess our sins. We think that we are strong and won't fall into the temptation of sin. Let's ask the Lord to forgive us and help us. So about this immoral woman, this harlot, the whole Bible says when the Israelites leave God, they are like a adulterous woman, and. Are we also like this today? That we are far from God, like we don't go to church or cell group online, uh, uh, on site. We just go online, or just like this young man. And do we put God in the last priority and put other things first? So we don't put God first and people in the land, and we think we're still fine. We have spiritual pride. We think it's okay if we we watch the service online. So may the Lord help us today. May we be teachable. We need to have the wisdom. The not think that oh, just once or twice is okay. Otherwise, it will be like verse twenty six. And all who were slain by her were strong men. We may. Think that we are strong and fine and can stand firm, but actually we just、uh, keeping Sabbath in our own way, or maybe we have not even kept the Sabbath and we have not kept the Torah. We have despised wisdom. We make ourselves as the Lord and not treat the Lord as our Lord. God, please forgive us. Help us. So that we can respond to you from our hearts, not just outwardly, but from our hearts. I want to treasure your word. May you, you use this song as a prayer and an old hymn, but it's still fresh because it's the truth. 
and this is a prayer of Christians for many generations. Lord, this is a prayer, and, and carve, carve your words into our hearts so that we'll not sin against you, so we we'll not be far from your wisdom. Wisdom is our close kin. May your word always be in our ear and lead our way. We don't want to take the path of hell, but the path of light. Lord, keep us with your wisdom and renew us every day, every day. Lord, we thank you. We are praying in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Proverbs chapter seven, verse one and two. My son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live, and my law as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. So let's enter the spirit, receive it into our hearts. Let this word go deep into our hearts and our spirit. Holy Spirit, may you fill us right now, fill our hearts in Jesus Christ's name. I. Give you the precious word of God in our spirit, in our hearts, Holy Spirit. May you carve these words in on the tablet of our hearts, so our spiritual ears、uh, can be opened, and we can have the wisdom to receive your word, because you are telling us, telling our hearts and spirit, my son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live, and my law as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. In Jesus Christ's name, I ask the Holy Spirit, write these words on the tablet of our hearts, so that wherever we go, wherever we are, wherever. Whatever the time is, our hearts will be filled with the word of God, and the word of God can be a light unto a path leading us to the everlasting life. Lord, may you bless us like this. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our morning devotion will end here. May the Lord bless you all.